So I'm Josh Sutton. Um, on paper, according to the state of Washington, I'm what you uh, refer to as a career criminal. Um, I've done time in both the juvenile and adult prison system. Uh, I'm a product of drug use and abuse, and I battle a 23-year drug and alcohol addiction and believe that that life was going to be my life. That was my destiny. Until 21 months ago, uh, my clean and sober date is February 17, uh, 2015. Yeah. Um, I'm a drug court participant. I'm scheduled to graduate January 27th. For those of you that don't know, that's thank you. that's an 18th month uh, intensive outpatient program in lieu of a prison sentence that I would have gone back to do. Uh, Today, for the first time in my life, um, I have a driver's license. I've been in my job for over a year. Um, I'm a father, I'm a college student, and this is the last day of my very first quarter of college. <laughs> Valuable lessons. So I've learned a lot of valuable lessons in this class especially, um, and most everyone has touched on them. The biggest one for me was everybody has problems, um, everybody has outside issues, nobody is joyous and free and has all the time in the world to study, you know, everybody has something going on in their life. Um, it was really important for me to get outside of myself and figure out how to work with others. Um, it's funny, I, I never had any problem asking somebody to help me commit a felony, but to ask somebody to help me with something positive has been very tough. So the top three topics I really appreciated, the 32 day SMART goal, um, I really appreciated that because after I wrote that out the next day I had to change it because I already failed it. Um, but it was important for me to know uh, that I'm going to fail things, that, and it's not for me to, to stop trying that goal. You know, I just have to restart it. It's important for me to, to focus and to know that I'm not going to be able to do everything perfectly. Um, I struggle with uh, perfectionism, which has hindered me. The scavenger hunt I thought was really cool. Um, I don't know if it, if it wasn't for that assignment, I probably wouldn't have gone to any other place on campus except to the three locations for my classes that I had to go. Um, you know, and we did that as a group, which I think was important too. It helped me get to know people as we were doing that and to build relationships. The weekly assessments, um, were huge for me as well. I, I was one of the people on the very first day who did not write anything in the student comment section. Um, I didn't really think nothing of that. I thought it was optional. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I took the option to not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mr. C very, very quickly pointed that out that it was not an option. <laughs> and that if I wanted to be successful and my career as a student that I should have some comments that I should put down and not just a one-liner like here you go take that let me get my credit <laughs> you know I need to put some thought into it and it really kind of opened my eyes to uh, what I thought was going to be an easy task as you know that there was something behind that that I needed to get out of that I would also be able to look back at and to learn and grow from areas of improvement um, Time management is, is a big is a big thing for me. I'm, I work full time. Uh, like I said, I, I'm, I'm in drug court, which I'm required to go to four meetings a week. I also have group twice a week. I have to go to court once a month, um, and whatever else they tell me to do. And then I have school. I, I took 14 credits this quarter, um, so I was here every day of the week. And I also have seven children. My daughter is the captain of the high school basketball team here at Bremerton, and I have kids from 20 years old down to five. 
uh, it's important for me to be a part of their life. So I juggle a lot. Um, attendance. I mean, there's just no way around it. I'm kind of lazy, you know, especially um, <coughs> since I've become sober and I've, I've done all these things, I, I kind of I kind of rest on my laurel, laurels a little bit. Um, and at times I feel uh, I just don't want to do it, you know, and I don't. My study habits were sporadic. Um, the first week of school, first two weeks of school, I went super hard. Like I was here every day till 10, you know, the library closes at 8 o'clock and then the lab across is open till 10 and I was here all that time. Uh, but I kind of burnt myself out. You know, I, I needed to pace myself a little more uh, with the studying and be a little more consistent at it as well. Um, so I was able, I dropped a day at work. Um, and then Mondays and Tuesdays. I'm the night shift lead at my work. I started there, which is C Film, the movie theater downtown. I started there as a janitor. I worked there from 11 at night till 5 in the morning. Uh, within a year, I worked my way up to night shift lead. And so I was able to, to configure some stuff with my schedule to where, you know, I would work box office Monday, Tuesday because it's slower and I could do homework on the computer in between selling tickets. So I was, I was able to configure some stuff to where I could manage my time a little better and be able to do my schoolwork and uh, kind of relieve some of the stress of you know putting so much pressure to get stuff on done the night before I always kind of told myself that I were better that way but it's kind of lazy uh, my struggles so uh, my grandfather passed away on Veterans Day um, he's the only man that has ever really been consistently in my life. We followed my grandparents around my whole life. Um, he was a great man. And that was tough. He was diagnosed with cancer in February and he was gone five, five months later. So it was really fast and uh, it was tough seeing him like that and still trying to um, I don't know, figure out what all this, because this is all new to me. I, I started using at 14, and uh, I don't know. This is, it was, it's been really tough. So also balancing work and school. Um, I've never really had a job before. I, I've done some odds and ends things, but I, I sold drugs. I got to make my own schedule. Um, Having to be responsible and, uh, you know, some things just changed, you know. So work became a priority, and a lot of times my brain would tell me that maybe, maybe school wasn't the avenue I needed to go, you know. Maybe I could just, maybe this wasn't the right choice. I could just continue to work. Uh, but also I know that I, I as much as I love my job and I appreciate the opportunity to have that job, um, it's not a life goal of mine to work in a movie theater, you know, in any capacity. Um, so that kind of brought back, you know, my priorities needed to change a little bit. And like I said, I did cut a day off of work. Um, I broke up with my girlfriend um, just because. School needed to come first, you know. For me, it's like sobriety, my children, and then school. And for once in my life, I need to be first. And, and I don't want to affect anybody else's life um, because I need to do homework, you know. And I, school has helped me realize a lot of things, you know. It's helped me realize what I want to do that I can do it. Um, I think I forgot to mention, the last grade I completed was eighth grade. I dropped out of school. Uh, I got my GED like six years ago, so my children couldn't tell me that I didn't graduate, so they didn't have to. Um, so things have just 
you know, this last 21 months, I've just, uh, continu I've just continued to grow and to really find out who I am as a person, what I want out of my life, and that there, my life is not over. Like, I can still have that life. But my priorities need to change, and I need to become a priority. My skills, so outside of Facebook and YouTube and every other, you know, social media outlet, I really had no computer skills um, whatsoever. Uh, it was hard for me to figure out how to navigate, you know, Canvas and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, but now, you know, I, I made this PowerPoint. I just... Uh, last week, I got my pre-graduation questionnaire for drug court, and it's a 21-question thing. I typed it, which is crazy. <laughs> I don't type. It, that is not in my nature to, like, I would have just handwritten it, you know, and I typed it. It was weird. I sat down with my laptop. I opened up a Word document, and I just started to type, you know, and that just rolls right into how I've applied school. School... I, I used to separate school and life, you know, and now it's just all one thing. You know, there is no difference between what I apply from what I've learned at work to school and vice versa. And same with my life. Um, I'm very open about my life. Um, I've found a belief in myself. Uh, you know, I've struggled with everything that you've talked about, Richard. You know, it always seems to be the happiest person in the room is the one with the deepest secrets and I totally understand that. Um, I've struggled this quarter and at times have wanted to quit. Uh, you know, I set crazy goals for myself that are unattainable. I want everything to be perfect. I want to get it perfect. Even my grandmother when I was leaving this morning, get go get it perfect. You know, that's just kind of you know I just want to be the best me that I can be. And I know that that's not going to be perfect. Uh, so my strengths. <coughs> I am not a quitter. I've, I've been a fighter my whole life. Uh, and I've kind of been forced to be that. Um, I'm the only boy in my family. My mother was abused pretty bad when I was a kid. And... Uh, it was always my job to make that not happen. Uh, so, nowadays I'm just not a quitter in, in a better way. Like I always used to think not being a quitter was like, oh, I'm gonna go to prison, I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna figure out them couple things I went to prison for and, I, and I'm gonna be able to do what I was doing for a longer period of time. And, and, Today, me not being a quitter is understanding that I'm going to have bumps in the road. I'm going to get a 1.9 GPA. <laughs> and I'm going to use that to help other people and to help myself and to use that in a positive way. Um, I'm pretty punctual. I was raised by my grandfather that if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Since I became a responsible individual, uh, I'm usually 15 minutes to a half hour early wherever I go. Work loves me because I'm usually an hour early to work because I don't like to go to work and have to go right to work, but usually I clock in early, so they like that. <laughs> and I am a hard worker. Um, I tried to be the best at whatever I was doing, whether that was uh, being a thief, or a liar, or a drug dealer, to be the best at it. And now those things have just transitioned into positive things. My challenges. Um, everything in my life has been fear-based. Uh, and most of that is uh, an internal thing. I've never been scared to be around guns or violence or anything like that. Um, and mostly thinking about it is probably that's kind of where I hit out. 
because like I said, doing anything positive for me was was a scary thing. I was and still kind of am scared of success. The more I have built up in a positive is, you know, it's the more I have t to lose. Uh, but today I know that, you know, I have I have my choices and I have the consequences of those choices and, and I'm prepared to deal with those, whatever they may be. Um, staying motivated, like I said, I'm lazy. Uh, and when I get stressed, I'm a sleeper, just like my mother was. I was raised that you know you could just pass out and the cops at the door who were telling you you need to leave your home would not be there when you woke up, and they were always still there. <laughs> um, so that, that's a habit I'm trying to change. Showing up, when I get depressed, I just kind of want to hide. Uh, when my grandfather, right before he passed, you know, I didn't come to school for like a week and a half. But I didn't miss work. So thinking back on that, you know, there was really no reason for me to miss school. Uh, but it is what it is. <coughs> so I made a choice to not show up, and that affected my grade quite heavily, actually. A lot more than I thought it would. Um, but a life lesson for me, uh, choices and consequences. So I carry a couple coins with me. Uh, one is on my keychain. It's my personal 18-month coin. Um, this is the coin I got from treatment. I also carry my one-year coin that's in my car, which was actually my mother's one-year coin she gave to me. She's mm -hmm. been clean for 10 years now. Uh, so this says, life is a journey, not a destination. Personal growth is not a journey of a thousand days or a journey of a lifetime. It's a journey of one day at a time. Uh, that, to me, is a big thing. Whenever I start to look at the big picture, uh, I get clouded and my, I start to wander. And I just need to focus on today. Tomorrow is not promised to me. <clears throat> as long as I do what I need to do today for myself, tomorrow will take care of itself. Um, so thank you. I just want to say one more thing. I almost forgot this is the most important part. <laughs> I would like to say that I didn't pick this class. Uh, I had no idea what to expect with this class. Uh, my higher power has a plan for me, and that plan put Mr. C in my path, and I can't express enough how my thought process has changed about college and how important it is to not just attend, but to experience college. Uh, thank you for your positive attitude and your genuine concern and life lessons. Most of all, thank you for sharing your personal and your life experiences. That's been huge for me. Um, it really changed the college experience for me, having you not only be an instructor, but, but a, a person uh, that I can relate to. Uh, and especially for sharing your 1.9 GPA. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that a lot. You know, that, that was uh, huge for me. I'll never forget the teachable moments. You know, that will forever uh, rain, run true for me. So I, I really appreciate you. This, this has been life changing. I'm very proud of you. Really proud. I was gonna say the same thing. I'm very proud, and we share a similar sober day. I'm seven, um, February 17, oh, really? 2014. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's the same thing. Like it was nice talking sports with you. Showing up and just badger each other, teens, and talk back. <laughs> it was nice. So, what's that 10 year goal? <laughs> uh, I want to run a treatment facility. That's what I want to do. I'm, I'm here for get my AA and human services, my CDP. 
but my tenure goal is to be the head of the Chula facility. I too am proud of you, and um, you're an inspiration, and hope that gets to work for you someday in your future. So, one thing I find very fascinating, and of course, uh, the Patriots thing just kills me, <laughs> is over and over you say, you know, I'm lazy, I'm lazy, but your whole presentation and all the things that you are and all the things that you do are just the opposite of laziness. Does anyone in this room get the idea that Josh was lazy? No. 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 I didn't hear that at all. Here's just the opposite. I think you just think you might be, but you're not. That's what you think. I am mentally watching that. If you keep saying it, it becomes self-fulfilling. You've got to stop saying that. You really do. You have to stop saying it. You have to stop saying that you're lazy and start saying, I'm going to do it, I can keep doing it, and just keep that positive attitude. But if you do tell people that you're lazy, then it's going to be self-fulfilling and you're going to you're going to fall into the trap again. Come on. So please be careful of that. You're a hard yeah, worker. You were required. The assignment for the capstone was to do three of eight. And one, you've had the longest presentation. Uh, two, I, I think you did you. maybe six? For 18 minutes. Or eight. I did all of them. Oh, you did all of them? Yeah. Woo! That doesn't sound like lazy. Yeah. 